Would you like to turn back your biological clock? Look younger and live longer. I know I would. And so I'm lying inside this small glass tube, breathing high pressure oxygen in a bid to rejuvenate my cells. It's one of a myriad of so far unproven treatments that promise to reverse the process of aging. But there are scientists who say that they've discovered the secret to longer life. Some are using the latest medical technology to study aging and hope to develop life-extending drugs. While others say that the secret to aging well can be found with a more philosophical approach. I'm Professor Hannah Fry, a mathematician and writer. I study patterns in human behaviour and how we might solve some of the biggest challenges of our future. So can we really defy the arrow of time? And what will it mean for the world if we all live to 150? So sweet! Yeah, thank you. Amazing! Come thank you me. so much. I've come to the home of Dora Vanderkamp. Want to know one of the most powerful anti-aging biohacks out there? She's an anti-aging influencer and part of a growing community of so-called biohackers. So here's my six-step evening routine. Yes, this does go in your back side. These people have taken health and longevity to obsessive new heights. I've invested over $200,000 in my health and wellness. I'm just really intrigued to see how far you go. <laughs> I feel like lifestyle. I go pretty far. Yeah? Can you give me a little tour? Sure, I would love your, to. Like a biohacker's tour. So let's do it. Air filter. This is actually really important. Mold tends to be something that happens to a lot of houses, mm. especially old houses like this. That causes a whole host of problems. Dora and her partner Andrew start their day with a cocktail of vitamins and supplements. That's quite a lot. So magnesium, this has five forms of magnesium. We have mushrooms. I take beef liver. And then I take this, which is called molecular hydrogen. How much do you hope that what you're doing will end up extending your life? I think if it doesn't, I'll still be really happy because I feel good. Dora's fascination with nutrition extends to everything she eats. So we're gonna have you cut these into three. So I'm gonna okay. have you no problem. open, and that is actually from a local farm. Mm -hmm. I try to be really mindful of where my meat comes from. While dinner is cooking, Dora shows me another key part of her age-defying routine. This is red light therapy. So this is stimulating collagen and elastin production, fighting inflammation in the body. I do at least 20 minutes every morning. So <laughs> I like the idea of getting up in the morning and giving yourself 20 minutes just to reset mm -hmm. and journal and think about your day. And there's more. So this is mouth tape. <laughs> so we just put it like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it <laughs> is slightly bonkers, isn't it's it? It's weird. So we're meant to breathe through our noses. And so what we do is we tape our mouth shut and that way we only breathe through our nose at night. Taping your mouth shut before bed is a biohacking trend that is sweeping social media. Fans say it has a range of health benefits, but none of them are proven. Okay, well, what about if you've got a bit of a cold? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the last time I had a cold. I don't think she's ever had a cold. Yeah, I really don't, I really don't get sick. I don't know. Wow. Dora's dedication is extreme, and I'm curious to know what drives her. Thank you so much for this. 
I had a magic wand and uh, could grant you a wish mm. that you can live to any age that you choose, mm. what would you pick? Oh, man. I'm going to ask you as well in a second, Andrew. So 150. Get 150? Yeah. You'd go 150? Yeah. I feel like it would be more less a number and more like when I feel that I've done all I can do on Earth. Because I want to make an impact. I feel really passionate about things. I feel really passionate about like wildlife and contributing and being a good mom one day and if I'm 150 right like how wise I'll be how much education I'll have how many books I'll have read so I'll, I might even be more valuable than ever I think that's a really good way to look at it actually mm -hmm. nice that's exactly yeah it's morning and I've had time to reflect on my meeting with Dora I mean, I'm kind of a bit conflicted, right? On the one hand, I think that there is a, a lot of pseudoscience going on, but at the same time, she makes time for herself and she prioritizes her body in a way that is really impressive. I want to know a bit more about the science of this because how much is it actually making? I mean, she looks fantastic. But how much of a difference does it actually make to her, scientifically? Dora's not alone in her quest. Humans have long sought the secret that will slow down the ravages of time. Anti-aging history is filled with quackery and snake oil. But more recently, a scientific revolution has begun unlocked in part by the discovery that one of the keys to ageing is hidden in our DNA. For a really long time, scientists thought that DNA was fixed for your whole life. But now, they've worked out that actually it can change. So it can change just if you eat a sandwich or spend some time with your friends, but it can also change if you do things like spend a lot of time smoking or drinking. And this has become known as epigenetics. Now, the reason for this is that your DNA is a very, very long strand. So to fit inside your cells, it has to be incredibly tightly wrapped and coiled up. And over time, that coiling can shift. It can unravel and twist in different shapes, exposing different parts of your DNA and changing how your body works. So it means that you can go from somebody with a full head of hair to someone who experiences hair loss. It means that your skin can start to sag. It means that your organs cannot function as well as they used to. But it can also lead to all kinds of malfunctions like cancer as well. So now, scientists, they've worked out that if you look along a strand of DNA, you can find these very particular markers along it that can give them an idea of how many epigenetic changes you have experienced which in a sense gives them a sort of epigenetic clock on your own body. And that can tell them not only how old you are now, but also how long you're likely to live. And who wouldn't want to discover their biological age given the chance? So I've come to a UCLA spin-out called the Clock Foundation but all it takes is a vial of blood. Presumably it's always nice doing a ginger person because their skin is practically see-through. Right. <laughs> That's it. Great. My blood will be analysed by one of the pioneers of the epigenetic clock, Professor Steve Horvath. I'm Steve. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, nice Steve. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I'll have to wait for the results, but the test should tell me how quickly my body is ageing. Let's say that I could write down on a piece of paper the day that you will die. Would you want to read it? Me personally? Yeah. Yes, I would love to know would that. Would you really? Yeah, I, it would help me a lot with planning my life. Let's say you tell me you have two more years. I mean, I would live it up. There would be party, 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 you know? <laughs> Steve created the test after spotting a correlation between a person's age and a biological process called methylation. Methylation refers to chemical modifications of the DNA molecule. So what turns out to happen with aging, some parts of the DNA gain methylation, 
but they shouldn't gain it. And other parts lose methylation, but they shouldn't lose it. And so by looking at which parts have gained methylation, which locations have lost methylation, you arrive at a formula, a mathematical formula, and that formula allows you then to measure age. We refer to that as an epigenetic clock. We have a predictor which is named after the Grim Reaper. We call it Grim Age Clock. The Grim Age Clock is um, really designed to predict how long you live. The main benefit of knowing someone's Grim Age is that it allows Steve to find out which life-extending interventions actually work without waiting for his subjects to, well, die. Unfortunately, right now I can only recommend the boring things. Um, if you smoke, really stop smoking. I eat lots of vegetables. I exercise every day. I'm, I'm a typical California health nut, I would say. But, um, but if I'm very honest um, about the science, it, it won't radically increase my life. Steve's mission is to find the things that could make a big difference to life expectancy. So if a healthy lifestyle won't do it, what will? One is this idea that young blood rejuvenates us. The vampire idea, it sounds ludicrous, but this is very well studied. In one experiment, the blood plasma from young rats was passed into older ones with some dramatic results. The treated rats look substantially younger, whereas when you look at the control rats, they do look old. You mm. know? Their fur's much more scraggly. These, ones, these treated ones look softer. Yes. And in essence, it cut the ages of these different organs of these rats by over 50%, you know. Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. That's pretty incredible, though. Plasma is the golden liquid part of blood. In humans, it contains over 700 proteins and substances vital for your body to function. In rats' blood plasma, some of the proteins decline as they get older, and replacing them appears to actually reverse the aging process. That already sounds like science fiction, but Steve's not finished yet. You harvested blood from the umbilical cords of newborn babies and injected it into people, to senior citizens, and essentially their grim age changed by nearly a year. Yes, that's correct. Um, I think it was 18 people. They were maybe on average 75 years old. Um, for 10 weeks, once a week, they got an injection of this young blood. And um, we carried out the epigenetic clock analysis, and sure enough, the grim age was rejuvenated. Um, but I want to emphasize something. These are proof of concept studies, because this is not a practical treatment, right? We are doing here uh, research, you know, to um, learn the secrets of rejuvenation. Umbilical cord blood from newborn babies isn't exactly scalable. And so Steve's ultimate goal is to isolate the chemicals that are having the age-reversing effect. Scientists could then develop a drug to turn back our biological clocks. This type of intervention is called regenerative medicine. It's a branch of medical science that seeks to repair or replace parts of our body. With these kinds of revolutionary treatments, scientists at the Babram Institute in the UK were able to reverse the effect of aging on skin cells by up to 30 years. People with macular degeneration have been given their sight back. And at Michigan State University, researchers have created a miniature beating heart in the hope that we could one day simply replace worn out organs. A few weeks have passed since I met with Steve, and the results of my Grim Age test are finally ready. Hello. How are you doing? Good. No, it's been I'm, a while. It has been a while. <laughs> and if anything, you look younger than you did before, Steve. <laughs> These are powerful Zoom filters, maybe. Oh, I see. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, I'm a tiny bit nervous about this. I'm absolutely convinced that it's going to be 
much older than I actually am. And the reason for that is that um, I spent a decade of my life smoking, which was, turns out, a very bad idea. I have some good news for you. So we looked at the so-called grim age biomarker, and your grim age is 39.5 years. <laughs> That's your grim age. In short, 39. And um, if I remember correctly, your what we call chronological age or calendar age is 38. Correct. And what I can tell you is you're right smack in the middle. You, you are like the average person in terms of <laughs> image. You're not better off, you're not worse off, you know. <laughs> I'm extremely pleased with that, Steve. Yeah, okay. I'm glad, yeah. And um, so, yeah, continue your healthy lifestyle. Mm. Stay strong and stay on the narrow path of um, healthy lifestyle. <laughs> I promise I will. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm very happy with that. I've got to be honest. I was genuinely expecting it to be like 46. But I think... I mean, I've lived a life, put it that way. Steve's test tells me that I'm reasonably healthy, despite my many vices. And with any luck, I'm not going anytime soon. Although Dora is likely to outlive me. If more and more of us are going to be living well beyond retirement, that is surely going to have huge implications for society. Economist Andrew Scott has been thinking about how society will need to change to accommodate an ageing population. There are new challenges that we have to face. In particular, how do we finance a longer life? And of course, it's going to have to be working for longer, and that's already happening. We see governments around the world pushing up the state pension age. Let's say you live to 100. What would it be like to be you know, still working well into your older years. Well, I hope you're not working when you're 100. <laughs> what we saw in the 20th century was as we got richer and life got longer, we said, hey, I want more leisure. So we invented the weekend and we invented retirement. And as life expectancy increased, we took more and more leisure after retirement. What we're finding now is we can't afford it. Life expectancy is so long, we're going to have to raise the retirement age. So for me, the big trend is we're going to take leisure this side of retirement. That may be a four-day working week, it may be flexible working, it may be career structures that are more complicated, where there are times when you say, look, I'm going to ramp down, I'm going to work more flexibly. And that means a longer working career, but it doesn't mean the same working career. Just, I mean, the way you're describing it there is the whole structure of society, all of that's going to change. I, I think it already is. You know, I, if you're living longer, I think you need to take a longer-term perspective on life. Are you secretly 104? <laughs> I'm only 20, that's the challenge. <laughs> I'm just, that's why I'm so interested in aging. Yeah. So. <laughs> in certain places on our planet, people are already living much longer than elsewhere. Like here, in Japan, where the average man or woman can expect to live to the right old age of 85. That is a whole eight years longer than in the US. Good diet and exercise alone won't radically extend your life. So what is their secret? I've come to chat to neuroscientist Dr. Ken Mogi. Welcome to Tokyo. <laughs> it's so busy, so busy. Longer lifespans and a low birth rate means that Japan has the highest percentage of over 65s anywhere in the world. Japanese elderly, are, they are really active. I mean, sometimes they are more youthful than the younger generations, I mean. Ken has a theory that the secret of long life is all about purpose. And of course, the Japanese have a word for it. Ikigai. Ikigai is something you live for. And it can be something big, like, you know, you know ultimate goal in your life. And it can be something small, like, taking a walk for, you know, taking a dog for a walk. In my case, my ikigai is going for a run in the morning. And I used to study butterflies when I was a kid. So I always look for butterflies, you know. And when I found one, uh, it's always such a pleasure to do, to observe their behaviors. You know what, Ken, when you, when you started talking about butterflies, your face genuinely lit up. Really? <laughs> because butterflies don't live long. So encountering one is like a miracle. Normally when people describe purpose, I think especially in the West actually, mm -hmm. 
your purpose is like your career or it's like your big ambition. Yeah. But butterflies, <laughs> I mean, butterflies are great, but they're, but they're quite a lot smaller. Yeah. That's actually uh, the genius of the Japanese concept of Ikigai because it's often the small things that actually kickstart your day. Remember, Japan is a country where they made an entirely art form of drinking tea. <laughs> the importance of being in the here and now. I think that has been in the Japanese culture for many, many years. Uh, Buddhist monks do that, school children do that, and grown-ups do that. I do it all the time, being in the here and now. I think that's the heart of Ikigai. Everyone who I've spoken to so far who is interested in longevity, uh -huh. they, they really, they're looking for the thing, the device, the, yeah. the cream, the yeah. pill that will make them live longer. If you, you know, follow the philosophy of Ikigai, you actually don't have a silver bullet. Uh, you actually have a magic carpet on, wh on which you can probably ride. But that magic carpet is, you know, floating on many, many small things. So all these small Ikigai uh, would make your day and actually that would contribute to the long life of Japanese people. Do you want to live long? No, I want to live well. <laughs> That's great. I think those people who live the longest and the healthiest life are those people who are not concerned about longevity at all. I think that's probably the greatest secret of Japanese long life. Ikigai is all about having a reason for being. It's about taking pleasure in doing something that you love. According to Ken, the key is the feeling of purpose from pursuing your passion. That is the secret to a long and happy life. Ken then takes me to something called an Emma board. It's a shrine where anyone can hang their hopes for the future. This is where people, you know, write their wishes. For their lives? But yeah. This one is for wishing good health for the family members. And, What's yeah. this one say? Uh, well, this is uh, wishing for a happy marriage. So for so, me, can, yeah. can you write sure. um, in Japanese? Okay. Yeah. I hope I get to live a life of play. Yeah. Scientists around the world say that they are closing in on a way to control aging. I don't think we're going to see people living to 150 anytime soon. But there is real promise in the research that seeks to rejuvenate our cells and extend the time that we're healthy. For me, though, longevity can't just be about delaying the inevitable. You have to see your own life in a different way. You have to see your life not as this big challenge. You have to just kind of let go of that and see your life instead as moments of joy and purpose. You know, there's this, this phrase that I really have liked for years. Life is not a problem to be solved. It's an experience to be had. And I think the same thing applies to longevity. Mm -hmm.